Hey, this is the color reflection, uh, the color candy lab. Um, and we're going to be talking about colors of light and how they reflect under different lights. So we have another um, food lab. And so I have M&Ms here. And if you look under the white light, you easily, students could easily sort these into red, green, orange, blue, brown. However, when they are using a light other than white light, the story is completely different. So you are getting this light clamp, which I actually have attached to a chair next to the table, and you are getting these color changing light bulbs that come with a remote. And um, it looks like it's really complicated, but it's not. There's an R, a G, a B. So you can use those lights for this lab. And then there's all kinds of other crazy buttons on here that you can use for when you want to make your classroom into a disco. But um, today, you're just going to be working with the RGB. So don't be um, puzzled by this little remote. It's pretty easy. OK, so we are going to put the M&Ms under this light. And you, of course, as always, you would want to have kids make a prediction what color do they think that they are going to see? So um, there is a, a recording sheet. And the first part, they are um, mixing LED lights. If you haven't already done that, they are mixing highlighter colors if you haven't already done that somewhere else. But if you've done that somewhere else, you can skip right to this part. Um, I know in some of the labs we've showed you today already you've seen that. So we're not going to start from the beginning, but starting kind of in the middle. OK, so we have these M&Ms and you'd be making a prediction about what you think is going to happen when you look at the M&Ms under red light. Are you going to be able to easily pick out the red M&Ms? Not easy to pick out the red M&Ms. How are we going to sort it? Okay, so go ahead and get the lights and I'm going to turn this on and make it a red light. And um, so when I go ahead and sort these, I am basically going to see brights and darks. So your students will probably be sorting these into two or three piles. Um, they really can't tell the difference. And it has to do with, in the red light, um, the ones, the colors that have red pigment in them are going to show up as bright, and the ones that do not have red pigment in them just show up as dark. So when I sort these, I have sorted them into brights and darks. And you, kind of see there that I have a pile of brights and darks. Can we have the lights again, please? Okay, now when we look under the white light, we can see that I could not distinguish between red, yellow, and orange. Those all, I grouped them together, and blue, green, and brown. So um, now knowing that, have students make a prediction. Okay, now I am going to make it a blue light. So how would you predict that I'm going to sort these? So I go ahead and mix them up again. Um, and there's a place for them to, so, to actually record how many reds I had in the sort of red category, how many I had in the actual. Um, so you can go ahead and do that. But um, I won't make you go through all that right now. So we are going to go ahead and do the blue light now. Okay, And I'm going to sort these really quickly. Now, were you predicting that I'd be able to pick out the blue ones or not pick out the blue ones in the blue light? These look really good. These. And you could have different students come up to sort this because you are only getting one light set. So this will be a class activity, um, more like a demonstration. and I'm almost happy with my sorting. All right, and lights, please. Okay, and you can see that I found all the blue ones, actually. Um, I put some of the green and yellows together, and then these I was having a hard time with. I had these, the orange were mostly separated out, but the red and brown I had no chance of telling the difference with those. And then last but not least, you would repeat this using the green light. Um, so if you, um, so that's a great activity to show how we see different colors and how it changes if we don't have white light. Um, after that, the kids are going to apply what they've learned and they're going to be drawing the colors of what would happen if light was hitting a white M&M, if light was hitting a black M&M. 
And then you can kind of assess how they did. It says try to draw how red M&Ms will appear to our eyes under white light, as well as under pure red light and under blue light. So applying what they've learned there. And then seeing what they're still wondering, you've got this cool technology here. So what would they want to test? So you never know what they're going to come up with, with fourth graders.